We've painted a huge Crimson Fist army. This army has been painted over multiple phases and has a great selection of miniatures, including some Inceptors, we've got some Brutalist Dreadnoughts, we've got some Eliminators, Terminators, and also some Stern Guard veterans led by some awesome characters. So first let's have a look at the Gladius tanks in the army and there are three of them in the really awesome livery of the Crimson Fists. Now what I absolutely love about these is our client has requested that Morgan, who's the team member who's worked on this force, um, has put this really cool crimson stripe down the front of the vehicle all the way across the top. Uh, and you've got some accent colours like on the sort of cylinders on the left flanks of the tank as well, done in that crimson colour. Um, lots of battle damage on here as well. So we've got some really nice sort of like chips and scratches across the armoured areas of the tank. Um, I do really love Crimson Fists. Obviously, that uh, backstory of obviously Rin's World and them defending it. It's great to see some Primaris models of the army as well. Uh, so that's this awesome Gladius. As I mentioned, there are three of them, but I will grab another one just to show the consistency of all the models to each other. So here is another one. And again, you can see that smattering of uh, weathering just on the front of it. As you can see there, you've got that big scratch that's just down the front here. Um, and obviously the chips and things on edges and some nice wear and tear. I do really love the use of green as the accent color, that high contrasting color to the red stripe. Um, also works with the blue, but really, really high punchy contrast, vibrant green on the sort of lighter areas of those lenses and, and things. We've got this awesome little sort of orb on the top here that's got this really nice subtle green glow. Uh, and catch light bright point on the top, which is just awesome. So that's another one of the Gladius tanks. Um, we've got some fast, hard hitting units that go with those tanks. We've also got some Inceptors, um, some really great miniatures, as you can see here. And we'll just have a look at one of these awesome Inceptors. Um, again, same uh, attention to detail across all of them with regards to the weathering and uh, little details. Bright green plasma, as you'd expect, which is just really nice and works extremely well with this uh, super, super cold kind of armor color and red hot accents. Um, just to talk about the basing across the force, you'll see here we've got this like industrial world kind of like basing uh, with lots of sort of rust and pipe works. Really like the use of the warm brown on that cold gray tone that's on the bases, which is just great. One thing I do really love is this really hot orange to yellow kind of like thruster kind of effect that uh, Morgan's done on the miniatures. Now you'll probably notice that these have got the, uh, the flight stands that they're known for having. Um, what we've actually done is we put a large pin in the flight stand here, as you can see, and we've actually drilled into the back of the Inceptor. Uh, and that just allows the Inceptor to slot on really nicely and securely. So it can be move, moved around with a large pin on it. It means that the model is very safe on there, as you'll see, um, and can be moved on there. Position them slightly different, maybe pose them slightly different. And at the same time, for storage and transport, it just makes it that sort of delicate kind of flight stand. Not so much of a worry for you as an owner of the miniatures that they're going to get damaged or broken. Really easy to just take them on and off of that flight stand. Uh, but that's just something that we've done in this project for our client across all of the Inceptors. So next, let's have a look at the Eliminators. And there's nine of them in this army. A really great miniature. And I do really love what our client requested and what Morgan's done on them. So as you can see here, we've got this awesome sort of red and white with kind of like an urban urban kind of camouflage pattern in that red and white, uh, which is just really, really cool. And that's on every single camo cloak and all the sort of uh, sort of uh, covered areas, even on that sort of hood that he's wearing there on the cover on the top of the uh, power pack. Um, again, loads and loads of detail on these. Obviously, you've got the sort of uh, purity seals and parchments all with text and everything on them. Um, I do really, really love the use of the red for the spot color on that iconic sort of uh, red gauntlets that, that Crimson Fists have got. All of them have got the Crimson Fist transfers, as you can see here as well. Uh, really nicely placed on there that they incorporated as part of the model as well, which is just great. Um, and the lenses and things on the guns just done in that green as well. And you'll see that consistent green all the way across the force, uh, which is just really nicely used. So next, we've got some eradicators to go with those eliminators, uh, some really hard hitting guns for the army. Uh, and there are six of them in this force. Uh, again, this guy's uh, got a bare head and you can see obviously all the facial details fully painted, fully toned, all the eyes and everything all painted and picked out. Uh, again, toting those massive uh, melter weapons that they've got, the melter rifles. And you can see that iconic kind of uh, red gauntlet that's just on there. I do really love the use of the green and the sort of like red spot color on those sort of uh, displays and buttons and dials just on the van braces on the wrists. And you, that will be seen consistent across all the miniatures as well. Um, 
thought when it comes to the model was something that I really do like as well. And you can see here on the base, there's like an expended kind of like melter cartridge, which has just got some smoke coming out of it. Really cleverly placed on the base there just to look like it there, that that Marine has just ejected that sort of magazine and replaced it with a fresh one. Um, you can see the basing as well. We've got these really large bricks and things that are just on there, which is just a really nice little attention to detail for the basing and adds that narrative and story as if they're trudging through areas of Rin's world, cleansing any remaining orcs that are left there. Um, you've got some skulls and things on the base again as well, which is just really nice. Uh, and that's one of the eradicators from this force. So just for consistency, I'll show you one of the other eradicators from the other squad. And I couldn't show you an eradicator without showing you one of the multi-melters. Again, massive, massive multi-melter here, as you can see. Um, I love all the extra sort of pipes and things just to show the heaviness and use of that weapon. Um, again, you can see on the van brace, you've got those lovely green and red kind of buttons and lights. It's just all been fully painted and picked out just to express this kind of like interest and details that are on the armor. Um, it's those little things that really make these models come to life. And you can see all the flesh work all done there. A really nice, smooth skin tone with lots of tonal variants on there as well. And again, the, the really cool bionic eye with that green little detail there as well is just great. Um, but again, really, really nice to execute. You can see on the backpack, you've got the little buttons and things. They're all fully lit up as well, just to show the use and function of that sort of heavy gauge backpack. Um, and then I do really like that the leather on these miniatures has also been done in like a black. Um, warm brown could also work with the color scheme, but I like the fact that the black's gone to show a bit more of a stealthy kind of like uh, urban combat kind of feel with the miniatures, which is just really cool. Uh, so that's just one of the uh, multi melter wielding eradicators. So to back up the Eradicators and Eliminators, we have got 20 Desolation Marines in two squads of 10. Now these controversial miniatures we showed off previously in a video on the channel, which you can check out. Uh, but let's jump in and have a look at them once again, because they are really, really awesome in this Crimson Fist livery. We'll start with one of the sergeants, obviously toting that massive launcher that you can see there. Um, again, all the lenses done with that lovely green and red sort of complementary split color scheme, which is just really great. Um, I do love the refinement of the edging, the multiple, multiple stages of edging that have been done across the armor panels on this miniature. And the aquilas and things being done in silver just really adds a bright, vibrant sort of metallic tone to the overall colorway, uh, with the armor being slightly darker. Um, as you can see, the missiles and things have all been painted as well with the lenses and all the little individual warheads on the missile launchers have all been painted as well. And again, we've got a lovely smooth skin tone there that's been painted on the miniature with all the eyes and details fully painted. There's even striations on the hair as well, just to denote the little details of fiber for the hairs. And again, you can see on the wrist there, you've got a little screen with some buttons and dials that's also been painted. And Morgan's done a great job of executing all of those little details across this force. So to add to this force, we've got some of the new models from the Leviathan box set. We've got some Stern Guard, Captain, and also we've got the iconic Terminator. I mean, what, what sort of Marine force would not be complete without some Terminators? Let's start with those, in fact, and let's have a look at one of the Terminators. We'll pull this Sergeant forward and have a look at him first. Again, really do absolutely love uh, Terminators. I think they're probably one of my favorite models from the 40K range. Uh, super imposing, indomitable as you'd expect. This is actually the Indomitus Pattern Terminator armor as well. So let's have a look at this sword. It's got some really cool striations on there as well, which just shows use, which I think is quite cool. And Morgan's added a lot of detail to the sword to show that there has been, you know, he's been using it in combat, which I think is quite cool. Really subtle bluish hue around the power node as well, just to show that it is active. Uh, which I think is great. And again, you can see the refinement of the weathering just across the armor. If you look at the knuckles on the uh, on that sort of fist there, you can see it's gone right down to that gray ceramite, which interestingly is a really good point. On this force, all of the battle damage is done in a nice dark gray to show that ceramic kind of ceramite underneath the paint, which is just great. Um, you can see all the purity seals with full text on them as well. And you've obviously got the lovely crimson kind of like tone to the wax part just at the top of the purity seal there on the thigh plate, which is just great. Um, little subtle things like the gems on that Crux Terminatus have just been done obviously with a, with like a ruby, which is just really nice. And you've got those really vibrant green lenses on that faceplate there of the Terminator Sergeant with the corresponding red like targeting lens just above the, uh, the head as well, which is just really nice. Um, overall, really, really awesome, awesome miniature with some super sharp highlighting across all of the uh, armor panels as well. Uh, and that's just one of the Terminators and the Sergeant from that squad. So to back up the Terminators, we've got some more elite infantry. We've got the Stern Guard, again, from the Leviathan box set. Really great sort of set of miniatures with some really nice poses and weapon loads out. We'll pull forward again the Sergeant from that squad because I do absolutely love this miniature and the pose. Really relaxed kind of like posture as well, just shooting with a pistol and the, the main sort of combo weapons just stowed there, which I think is great. Um, you can see the tilt shield has got some extra details painted onto it. You've got some little squares patterning on the bottom. You've got a nice skull there just that's been put on. Really nice use of red on the tabard as well. That, that sort of super clear uh, sort of lineage kind of color for the Crimson Fists, obviously with that red rouge tint on the, uh, on the cloth. 
Um, and again, you can see that all the details on the parchments and also on the name on the leg, for example. I love the fact that the, the posture of this one's slightly relaxed. Obviously, he's not fully looking in the direction of shooting as if the enemy that he's, that he's vanquishing doesn't even need his full attention, which I really, really do like. Um, and again, you can see all the details here. Again, on that van brace, you've got those little buttons and dials all fully painted. And you can see the transfers have been fully applied to this and the, uh, the really, really lovely, sharp, refined highlights across all the areas of the armour. Um, so that's this awesome sergeant from the Stern Guard, one of the Stern Guard squads in this force. So this army's got two characters to lead the charge and defend Rin's world. We've got two captains, one in Terminator armor, which we're gonna leave till last, and then we have a Gravis captain, which I do absolutely love. Um, this Gravis captain, in, in true Pedro Cantor style, uh, has got that lovely red uh, sort of fists on both arms, which uh, that sort of is distinguishable for Crimson Fist. We've also got the, uh, the sort of belt feed as well here, as you can see, just obviously just with loads of ammunition just spewing from the bolter from the gauntlet, which I think is great. Um, do love the use of the sort of really dark desaturated bone colours on that servo skull, just to show the age of that, um, that servo skull as well. Really old skull that's just bobbling around and following him. That stoic pose with a foot on the rock there just to obviously like lead a charge or defend an, an area, which is just great. Uh, and you can see that what I do really love about this miniature is the attention to detail that's been placed on this cape. You've got so many lovely subtle tones that are on there and some really nice deeper, darker, almost like burgundy Merlot colors that are just on there. And you've got the striations just to show a bit of a weave on the fabric as well, which is just really, really nice. Obviously loads of time and attention have been invested onto that sort of cape, uh, which is cool. And then you can see obviously all the scrolls and things have all got sort of details and writing and text on them as well. Um, and giving on the leg plate as well, there we've got some more details on that writing on that scroll. Uh, so that's this awesome Gravis captain. And last up, we have the Terminator Captain from the Leviathan box set. Now, I absolutely loved painting the one that we done in the Hawk Lords colours when Leviathan was released, and we had that lovely preview copy from Games Workshop. Um, but this, this one has been painted up, obviously, in the lineage of the Crimson Fists. But where else to start than this awesome Crimson Fists cape, this lovely free-handed detail that's been put onto that cape there, and you can just see it as I move it around. You've got the lighting effects just on that material where the light is catching that higher areas of the cloth and the lower areas of the cloth are just shaded obviously in a darker kind of uh, reddish kind of hue. Um, and all the catch lights on the folds and things are just really, really well executed. Morgan's done a phenomenal job and giving this captain something absolutely awesome to look at when they're on the table or in a cabinet. Um, I do really love the sword as well. So if we have a look at this really beautiful sword with that electricity field just glimmering all over it. Um, Morgan's done a great job of just all the little lightning effects and things that are on there. You've got all the text and the scrolls and parchments and purity seals. Uh, and we can't overlook having that amazing Tyranid Screamer Killer head on the base, uh, that fallen enemy that this guy's just vanquished. Again, you can see on the purity seals and scrolls on the front, there's even a, a, a Crimson Fist symbol just on the bottom of the central one. Um, and again, this guy's just bellowing away there, but even the teeth and all the details on the face have been fully highlighted and painted just to real add that character onto this miniature. Um, again, a phenomenal captain to lead this beautiful Crimson Fist army. We've absolutely loved working on all of the different aspects and phases of it. I know Morgan's thoroughly enjoyed bringing these guys to life, uh, so I do hope you've liked it ever so much. From all the team here at Siege, thank you very much for watching this video. If you're interested in a commission with us, be it for a character, small force, or army like this, do not hesitate in getting in touch with us through the description of this video where there's a link to our contact form on our website. I very much hope we can hear from you and potentially work on a project for you in the future. Thank you for watching the video. I'll see you very soon on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.